Leviathan unfortunately has the same backstory as Force Majeure, where I bought it on release either late 2014 or early 2015, I honestly can't remember when the Blu-ray came out, but I knew I bought it on release due to YMS giving it a pretty positive review, but for some reason I just never watched it. Now I know I'm going to butcher names here with this one, but bear with me. Leviathan is a Russian film directed by Andrei Zinyagenstev about Kola, played by Alexa Saren Bryakov, and his family fighting a corrupt mayor who is purchasing his house for demolition, and Kola brings out his old army buddy now a lawyer Dmitri played by Vladimir Vidyavinchenkov to help fight the mayor. However, with Dimitri's presence, things begin to worsen. Those are some names, man. Sorry if I sound a little stuffed up or congested, but the film is based around the Book of Job and Marvin Heemeyer's story, aka The Killdozer. If you don't know anything about The Killdozer or Marvin Heemeyer, there's an amazing documentary called Tread that goes into great details about the story, and I definitely recommend that one. It's a super interesting story. The inspiration from Leviathan from those sources really show as the film progresses, and honestly, this is going to be a hard one to talk about without spoiling the film. The film is rich with character. The outstanding performances from the cast make the main characters feel believable, as if documented rather than performed. Exposition doesn't explain the characters nor deliver their backstory, but rather their performances and interactions between each other with seeds of information help them blossom into deep and rich characters that organically build their characters' history and chemistry with each other on screen. You believe in their connection, and you feel for Cola as his life basically is stripped away from him. The camaraderie between the characters, especially during the drinking scenes really help strip away who they really are. Apparently, according to the IMDb trivia, the cast would actually drink during these scenes, and by like the 8th or ninth take, they were really sauced up. The drunk scenes were some of the most believable I've ever seen before because, well, I mean, they were really drunk. It really helps sell the realism that the film is building. The story is compelling as you just see where it takes Cola down this rabbit hole. It's oppressive for sure that makes the narrative strike with an emotional core, that narrative also leaving some ambiguity as to what happens in the final act that I really love. It's really open to some interpretations, it presents information to allow the viewers to go down multiple paths that all seem to have a strong argument for its case. I love endings like that and it really sews together the narrative's message of justice, faith, and power. The film actually also reminded me a lot of Satin Tango in tone and its rather patient nature. Leviathan is nowhere near as slow or as long, but it's also a slow burn that feels like a spiritual successor and personally more enjoyable for an experience, but it still reminded me of the 1994 film In Context. The film has some beautiful cinematography and a few visual foreshadowings that I love. There's a shot early on in the film that felt purposeful and interesting because I felt like it was foreshadowing something that would happen later down the road and I was right. It's foreshadowing something simple and did make the revelation predictable, but not in the way that it felt pandering or so predictable that it's annoying. It felt more like a reward to paying attention to its visuals and story. My biggest issues with the film would just have to be the fact that the score was so middling. It doesn't feel like it has much presence or even that rememberable, and personally the fact that the the film is so very heavy in tone, it's a dense film with little hope that's definitely a downer that makes some rewatches a mood point for sure. It's not something I'm going to pop in every year or so. I'd definitely watch it again, so don't get me wrong on that. It's a fantastic film with almost all positives to say, but I definitely need to be in the mood for something like this. It falls into that category of, yes, it's a masterpiece, but it hurt my feelings, so it's not going to go in the pick-me-up pile. I know that's a weird thing to criticize a film's dour nature, but it's worth mentioning if it's going to reflect the desire to watch it again. This without a doubt goes into the pile of must-watches at least once, and I'm sure on multiple rewatches there's more things to pick up on, and I eventually will definitely be rewatching this for that purpose, but again, I just feel like I need to be kind of in the right mood. Again, this is another film I'm kicking myself for for waiting so long to watch it. It would have easily been near the top of my best of 2014 list. It's masterclass in filmmaking. It makes me want to check out more of Andre Zinyagenstev's Zin other films. These names. I honestly can't recommend this one enough, and I'm giving this one a 9 out of 10.